Hello, everybody. My name is Evan, founder and CEO of Gentatech, and we're back today with another high level overview. Today, we're talking about LANs, also known as local area networks. And if this is your first time tuning in to a high level overview video, what this series is about, it's breaking down aspects of IT and simplifying it as much as it can possibly be simplified. That way, business owners and people just starting out have the information they need to begin to make better decisions and more importantly ask better questions and consultations and other professional environments with that said we're going to go ahead and build a network out right here um, but just bear with me for about 20 more seconds if you happen to be somebody that has some it experience this will not be the video for you since we're going to be breaking things down at a very very simplistic level and we're not going to be talking about any of the possibilities or different ways to configure or any of the amazing things that you can do we're just going to be talking about these things on an individual very simplistic basis so let's get started what is a local area network well a local area network can be best described as a collection of devices you can say that are in the same physical location, right? Um, and here's a caveat, that cannot be accessed through the internet. And they can, for my IT people who have experience here, we all know they can and they are often, if you configure them the right way. Uh, but in general, a local area network is a network that has that uses actually a reserved set of IP addresses that are specifically private. They are specifically made to not be accessible through the internet. Um, so those are the IP addresses assigned to those devices. But what does a LAN look like? Well, we have all dealt with one before, and I can say that comfortably, especially if you're watching this video. So most of us have a network at home and or a network in our business. And the beginning of that network is a router, which is this little bad boy here, all right? So this is going to be the beginning of our local area network, and this is gonna be the device that enables things to talk to each other. But, what a lot of people don't know is this is actually three devices in one. Within this router here, we have a modem. Let's throw this in there. It sounds weird to say this. There's a router within a router, but we, all, we actually do have a router within the router. All right. And then in addition to that, we have a wireless access point. Okay. And we'll throw that right here. Now, these things all together come into one and we create a router. Uh, most companies, um, whether you're Comcast, CenturyLink, uh, any of the big ISPs, they all offer, even the small ones too, they all offer you the option to usually rent a router. And the whole idea behind that is you can pay one little tiny flat fee and not have to buy these three things individually. Uh, but make no mistake about it, um, the routers that we're all used to dealing with whether it be a Comcast business gateway or anything from any of the big providers, they have three separate functionalities in one, but for whatever reason, we just call that one super functional piece of equipment a router. So we all know that we have a router, and in addition to that, we probably have a few computers in the office as well. And this uh, term here, workstation, is something that's used in the industry. Um, really, it doesn't really mean anything different than desktop uh, for the purpose of this conversation, or even the term computer, right? A server can be a computer too. Um, a lot of things can be a computer, but when you hear a computer, most people usually in the business sense are talking about a desktop, if we're speaking about it from layman's terms. And we're gonna be using the term workstation instead of desktop, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and put a couple of workstations here. Let's go ahead and just put three. And what we're gonna build is just a basic little tiny small office. We have three of these bad boys here. In an office, we might, uh, might have something, maybe a printer. Let's throw a printer in there. And then for the purpose of this, let's go ahead and throw a fax machine in there as well, even though the printer and the fax machine oftentimes, same thing. And then um, we can even go ahead and throw a phone in here. Okay, and we'll throw some phones. All right, so as it sits right now, if we bring these six devices into an office, our three workstations, our printer, our fax machine, and our phone, uh, the way they're made, they have no ability to talk to each other. And not only that, we don't have the ability to talk to them if we're on any of the other separate devices. So what that means is for a workstation, it might not be that big of a deal. Um, this workstation may not have to talk to this workstation, and that's okay, but I'm sure that somebody from this workstation is going to want to print something, right? Or perhaps maybe fax something. Well, the issue there is these two things on their own do not have the ability to talk to each other. Computers are made to do computer things. Printers are made to do printer things. 
so on and so forth. Workstations, I should say, not computers. So we have to give them the functionality, and that's where this little bad boy here, that's where this router comes in. So there's a couple of different ways that we can get this done. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is enable these two things to talk to each other. And although we do have a wireless access point built into this router here, giving us the benefit of Wi-Fi, we are going to pretend like that's not the case. So we're going to be uh, proactive here and go ahead and link up some Ethernet. Let's go ahead and grab a cord here. And there we go. All right. So what's going on here is on the back of this router, we're going to have a port an ethernet port and we're going to plug one end of that port into here and we're going to stretch that bad boy all the way over to here. Now this is going to give this uh, a line of communication and what happens here is a DHCP server is what it's called usually assigns an IP address to this device and that IP address will be what is used to talk to that device. Now I did mention that there's a private range of IP addresses. The most common ones are 192 and 10 so it will look like 192 dot one dot one dot one that could be you know the ip address for perhaps a gateway on a uh local area network or you could also have a 10 dot one dot one dot one now don't get too hung up on um really these numbers at all uh, just they're just a great example to show that these are the two most common ranges of ip addresses used when it comes to lands in addition to that, we have to remember that these are actually specifically reserved for private use. So they're for LANs as well. All right, so now we can say, and let's go ahead and change this for conventional purposes. This would not be that in real life. One is usually the gateway. We can go ahead and just give this, uh, this little IP address right here. All right, so now, since this computer has an IP address and this information is going back to the router, this router is prepared to send information coming from this computer to anywhere else on the network assuming other places on the network can be reached. So, as you can guess, we're gonna probably have to uh, enable these things to be connected, all right? So let's go ahead and run to this workstation, and we're gonna throw it into a different port, okay? That's the important thing here on the back of this router. We're gonna do this as well. Let's throw it right there, and we'll go ahead and do the phone. Now, a lot of people would say, hey, why does your phone have to go into your router? You know. We have a phone, we plug it straight into the wall. What we're doing here is assuming that the uh, company has some type of uh, IVR system, um, interactive voice recording system, um, and they're using it to the best of their ability. So you can hook that up to your router and do some pretty cool things with it that way. All right, let's hook this up here. All the way over to the router. And this printer, all the way over to the router as well. All right, so now what do we have here exactly, okay? Well, now we officially have a land. We officially have a local area network. And what can happen here is if this computer wants to send a message to this printer to print something, what this computer will do will shoot a message to the router. It'll go all the way over here to the router. The router will route that information all the way to the correct destination based on the IP address, and it'll send that info to the printer. The printer will receive that info and then at that point perform an action. As complicated as these things can get and as cool as you can, uh, you know, configure these things, as many things as you can do, this is really truly just the basis of how a local area network works. Now, as you can imagine, you can grow these things to massive amounts of sizes. There are some th certain things that you want to do for security purposes as far as segregating your network, and it, it can get really, really deep. But, but the basis of it is if you have an understanding of this, you have an understanding of how a local area network works and remember that is a router here and that router has the capability of a modem a router and a wireless access point and then all of these um, devices are going to be hooked up to this uh, uh, router here in this example via ethernet now you also can have a lan without having any ethernet hooked up since we do have the functionality of a wireless access point here we can also just use a wi-fi signal just like that to be the connection for these devices here. Uh, now, Wi-Fi is assigned the exact same way. Just because we're connecting through Wi-Fi doesn't mean that we're skipping the ability to get an IP address, uh, which means that we can still talk, right? So you can be routed the exact same way. The only difference is you just will not be hooked up to Ethernet. 
So that is an overview, a very, very high level overview of lands, also known as local area networks. If you have any questions or concerns, maybe you have an idea that popped up. Maybe you heard something in a consultation and you want to ask a question. Please feel free to reach out to us at info at And we will see you next time on High Level Overview.